Aneurysm. There are very few words in medicine that have the potential to scare patients more. People who hear the word aneurysm sometimes worry that they have a ticking time bomb in their body and that it may burst and harm them. Well, today I'm going to talk about an aneurysm in the splenic artery, the artery going to the spleen, a, a splenic artery aneurysm. This is the angiologist. I'm Dr. Ida Weinberg, and let's get going. First things first, what's an aneurysm? Arteries in the body have a certain normal size. When the artery is larger than that size, we call it dilated, and when the artery is even larger than that, we might call it an aneurysm. We name aneurysms according to the location where they appear. An aneurysm can happen in potentially all arteries of the body. When an aneurysm happens in the artery feeding the spleen, we call it a splenic artery aneurysm. Why do aneurysms happen in the artery feeding the spleen? Well, to be honest with you, I'm not entirely sure. The main reason is what's called degenerative. That's a term that means that the artery wall becomes weaker at a certain spot, and over time that spot kind of bulges out and slowly dilates into an aneurysm. I'm not sure why that happens specifically in the artery feeding the spleen, but that's definitely a common place for an aneurysm. Sometimes people have aneurysms because of a problem with the way their artery walls are built throughout their body. So if they have an aneurysm in one location, they may have an aneurysm in another location as well. But splenic artery aneurysms often appear on their own, which means that if you find a splenic artery aneurysm, it does not mean that the patient has aneurysms in other locations in most instances. So usually it is not part of a syndrome, but sort of a standalone problem because of weakening of the artery. Why should we care about aneurysms in the artery feeding the spleen? Like a balloon, as an aneurysm grows, it may rupture. If it ruptures, it may cause a bleed, and that bleed can cause harm. Bottom line is we worry about bleeds. When should we fix a splenic artery aneurysm? We should fix a splenic artery aneurysm when the aneurysm is large, because then the risk of rupture is high. If it is growing rapidly, because we worry that it will reach that threshold, and in certain age groups. It so happens to be that aneurysms tend to rupture more in young women when they appear in young women. And so it is said that when an aneurysm in the splenic artery reaches two centimeters in a woman of childbearing age, we should fix that aneurysm. Of course, sometimes we'll fix an aneurysm in an older person or in men, again, depending on the growth rate and depending on the absolute size of the aneurysm. But there's more to think about. One thing to think about is calcifications or calcium in the, in the aneurysm wall. The same calcium that we can find in our bones that makes our bones uh, tough and hard can also deposit in the aneurysm walls. If we see a ring of calcium in an aneurysm wall, it tells us that the aneurysm is slow growing and like a shell, it kind of keeps the aneurysm stable and we believe that the risk of rupture is lower. So if we see calcifications in an aneurysm, we oftentimes will kind of think of it as a sign that helps us not uh, offer treatment for that aneurysm. Also, uh, if an aneurysm is in a uh, dangerous location, we may not fix it. Let me explain. In order to, when we fix an aneurysm, we take risk because actually doing the procedure carries risk. We may harm the patient during the procedure, and fixing the aneurysm may inadvertently harm the spleen because the blood flowing to the spleen may go through the aneurysm. So if we're blocking blood flow to the aneurysm when we're trying to fix it, we may be blocking blood flow to the spleen itself. So if the aneurysm is located in such a way that increases the risk of these harms, we may shy away from treatment. If an aneurysm is easier to fix, it will be easier for us to offer intervention. So just to summarize this part, we typically offer a treatment for splenic artery aneurysms when the aneurysms are large, when they're growing rapidly, when they're in younger women, when there are no calcifications, and when fixing the aneurysm is relatively safe. How do we fix a splenic artery aneurysm? In modern times, the most common way to fix an, uh, an aneurysm going to the spleen is uh, by uh, uh, a catheter and wire and plugging the aneurysm. Basically, that means that you can find the aneurysm from the inside and then inject it with these little coils that effectively plug it. If the aneurysm is plugged, then blood isn't flowing through that segment of the aneurysm, and so the aneurysm can't rupture. A second way would be to cover the aneurysm with a special stent, a little fence that has a special cloth 
around it. So if we cover the aneurysm that way, again, we kind of divert blood flow through the stent and the blood is not flowing into the aneurysm, so again, it can't rupture. Sometimes the only way to fix a splenic artery aneurysm is with open surgery. That's not done often nowadays, but it's definitely an option on the table. The most common treatment, in air quotes, that we will offer patients with splenic artery aneurysms is going to be surveillance. Usually these aneurysms are identified when they are not large, when they uh, are not in the correct age group, etc., and we will opt to follow them. We'll offer a patient repeat scans to make sure the aneurysm isn't growing to a dangerous size. In summary, splenic artery aneurysms carry a risk of rupture, but we only need to fix them if they are large, growing, and in younger people. Otherwise, we can follow them with repeat scans. I hope you found this video useful. Please do comment because when you do, I understand what it is you want to know and I love answering your questions. Otherwise, as always, like, share, and subscribe and I'll see you next time.